How wonderful it is that there are people who simply enjoy using their skills to the advantage of others, just like that. No strings attached, completely free. People like Boris Malevich, who has made the most beautiful, extensive and accurate working drawings, and 3D models of the magnetic indicator stand, about which I made two videos. In this video, a short tour through some of the many drawings and models Boris made, and some additional information that may be useful should you decide to rebuild the instrument. And, just like with the beautiful drawings that Thomas Kemmerer made a few weeks ago, you can send me an email and I will send you the drawings for free. And if you feel the urge to give something back, please do so. Then donate a small amount to War Child. Especially now, they can really use every donation. Link in the description. The shaft is made from a piece of ready hardened and polished shaft steel. Alternatively, you can use silver steel, but warp may occur during hardening. The other parts of the base are made of free cutting steel, except, of course, the two rings for the magnets and the steel cylinders, which must definitely be made of a non ferrous material such as aluminium or brass. In the video of the construction, I didn't pay enough attention to it. Here I make up for that. The following is of great importance for maximum holding power. Use N52 New Demium Magnets, the strongest type. Make sure that the magnets in the disc can rotate freely. Keep the gap between the two discs as small as possible, a few hundredths of a millimeter max. Preferably, you let the two assembled discs just touch each other and then fill the bottom under the thrust bearing with shims of aluminium foil until the discs are just no longer in contact with each other. You also have to make sure that in the on position, the magnets are exactly above the steel cylinders. Boris has drawn two locating pins for this. Of course, you only can determine the right settings once the magnets and the handle plate are glued together and the 18 degree slit in the body is ready. As alternative, you could make some witness marks on the discs and the body before you glue in the bottom. There are also some tips to give about the measuring arm. If you do not have a facility to turn ball heads yourself, you could use bearing balls. If you make them red hot and let them cool down slowly, you can make a small flat surface on them, drill a hole into them and press a pin in or tap threading into them. All parts are made of silver steel. This is not really necessary for the knobs, but certainly recommended for the rest. The parts that can be subjected to high compressive forces, such as the pressure bolts and the ball heads, and certainly the spring rings, can best be hardened and tempered. The wedges are made of bronze, or for want of a better option, brass. As their length depends on the dimensions of various other parts, it is best to make them slightly too long at first, and file them to size during construction. The lower arm is glued in the elbow together with the cut-off part of the arm and a filler piece. Alternatively, you could also secure it with two set screws, but then you have to modify the shape of the elbow for those screw holes. The shoulder joint is of traditional and proven design. It is important that the shoulder washer and bushing can tilt slightly in the column strap to prevent unwanted pinching, hence the hollows and convexities. The forearm is split into a radius and an ulna, as explained in the video. It is important that this piece of silver steel is hardened and then tempered with great care. Furthermore, it is very important that the travel of the adjusting screw is such 
that it can never push the two parts of the forearm apart more than 0.3 to a maximum of half a millimeter. Please don't ask me how I know that. To counteract stress risers, you could drill a hole at the end of the slit, but that will definitely result in bending ratios that are different than shown in the video. I found it very difficult to make good fitting spring rings. In the end, I simply cut out parts of a tension spring. Here is an impression of the beautiful working drawings Boris has made. Send an email and they are yours. Until next time and many, many thanks to Boris.